Hey, my beautiful friend, it's an honor for me to connect with you in this way. I'm so, so, so grateful for you. Thank you for showing up in this way to do the inner healing work that is not only helping you grow and expand, but is also massively contributing to raising the consciousness of the planet. Our session for today is all about healing the inner critic. During this session, we will understand the role of the inner critic, where it comes from, and how to move past allowing it from holding ourselves back in any way. The healing technology we will use during this session is the core work method. The core work allows us to use applied quantum physics in a way that helps us release deeply rooted patterns and blocks that we've outgrown and helps us align with a more expansive way of showing up in our lives, which leads to the miraculous transformation we often see in our life. So let's set the intention that whatever healings, miracles, transformations, expansion that we are all ready to step into to, that we do so with ease, grace, and joy in the highest and best way for each of us. If you agree, please affirm out loud, and so it is. And so my beautiful friend, do I have your permission to connect with your energy? If so, just say yes. So let's ask the I am presence within each of us to give us the highest wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what it means to be a perfectionist, what perfectionism is. Can we go ahead and do that now? If you want that, say yes. The highest universal perspective of what perfectionism is, is simply someone who is choosing to always control. We can also say the same about criticism, really means to actually control. So can we have the highest universal aspect of each of us give us the highest wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what it means to criticize, what it means to be a critic? If you want that, say yes. And can we have the I am presence within each of us give us the highest wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what it means to control and make our perspective the same as the I am presence within us? If you want that, say yes. The highest perspective of control is the illusion that we are choosing to separate ourselves from spirit, separate ourselves from our true self. So control is the mind's way of simply choosing to separate itself from who we truly are. It's an illusion. So as much as the mind really will try to convince itself that it's separate, it never really can be separate because it comes from spirit. It comes from the universe, from source energy. So it's the illusion of the mind thinking that it's separating itself from our spirit, our true self. So if it's for our highest and greatest good, any part of that, can we have our I am presence allow us to receive that on a deep subconscious level? If you want that, say yes. Can we have your I am presence give you the ability right now to have compassion, love for the part of you that criticizes itself and others? If you want that, say yes. Can we have your I am presence teach you how to offer compassion and love to your inner perfectionist? If you want that, say yes. Control is the energy of survival. It's a form of survival of the fittest. I'm going to be in control so that you don't control me. So what happens is, in our society today, we're fed with media and news and reinforcements in all different directions that make us believe that we have to operate in survival. But if you really, really want to live a happy, healthy, vibrant, prosperous life. Our only job is to choose to transcend the need to always be in control by choosing peace. When we are at peace, we are our true self. We are love. We are compassion. We are ease. We are grace. We are blessings coming in and just drenching us in miraculous ways. But if we're always operating in control, it starts to create a breakdown in our mind, exhaustion. We start to see uh, imbalances in the body. We start to become very stiff, rigid, 
It's just not who we truly are. It becomes a shell of who we are, and that shell is so stiff, it's not even feeling comfortable. It's not even feeling good anymore. For a while, that armor feels good because you're keeping yourself safe to a certain degree. But when it gets so stiff and rigid, it starts to become really tight and uncomfortable for our spirit. We are a spiritual being first. That's who we are. Our body, our mind, everything is an extension of our spirit. So can we remind you that on a deep subconscious level that you are spirit? That spirit is not something that we control. It's not something that has a cap to it. It's always free. It's always expanding. It's always learning and growing and evolving. Can we show us that now and what will happen when we have this deep subconscious awareness? If you want that, say yes. The mind uses criticism because it thinks that it's keeping itself in check. So keeping yourself in check means that you're keeping yourself from shining, from standing out. You're keeping yourself small. The mind does that because it just wants to feel safe, protected. It doesn't want to stand out for whatever reason. Maybe it was told that it couldn't. The second one is keeping itself safe. So when it's safe, it doesn't have to expand, it doesn't have to change, it doesn't have to grow, it doesn't have to learn. So the mind loves to stay comfortable. It likes to stay in its structure, its parameters. But the thing is, your spirit doesn't have any of those things. So when we are connected more to our spirit and listening and trusting through intuition, through meditation, prayer, inner connection, connecting with nature, all those things, we are able to start to embrace change and learning and growing and expanding in a way that feels good. The mind also uses criticism because it thinks that it's a way of improving itself. And finally, it's using criticism as a way of thinking it's loving itself. Criticism is usually a form of judgment and it's a usually a type of opinion. So your opinion is not necessarily the same opinion as someone else and vice versa. It's not a form of love. It's actually a form of control. Control and love have nothing to do with each other. So all those times where you felt you had to keep yourself in check, you were not allowing yourself to fully shine, you were not allowing yourself to stand out, you were keeping yourself small, hidden, in any way, can we show you all the lessons you were meant to learn from all those timelines now? If you want that, say yes. Can we have your I am presence show you how to have compassion for the parts of you that needed to criticize itself to keep itself in check? Would you like that? Can we have your I am presence teach you how to replace keeping yourself in check with keeping yourself fully grounded in your power and in your light? Would you like that? Can we show you all the lessons that you were meant to learn from having the mind criticize you and others as a form of keeping itself safe? If you want that, say yes. Any parts of you that did not like to expand and change and grow and learn, can we show you all the lessons you were meant to learn from all those experiences now? If you want that, say yes. So for the part of you that wants to improve and achieve something as a result of criticism, can we show you all the lessons you were meant to learn from those experiences? Make sure that you learn them now so that you don't have to keep repeating those patterns. If you want that, say yes. Can we show you how to expand and grow even more into the magic of yourself rather than feeling like you have to improve yourself? Because usually if you feel like you have to improve yourself, a part of you feels like a part of you is not good enough. So I don't want to operate from that space. We want to operate from a space of I'm just choosing to be more of this part of myself, more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more understanding, more free, more creative. So those are already you. We're just going to expand into them. Would you like that?
can we have your I am presence show you what really was happening when you thought that by criticizing you're loving? Can we show you what really was happening? And we already know that you were controlling, whether it was controlling yourself, controlling others, allowing yourself to be controlled. If someone did that to you, that's what was happening. So can we have your I am presence show you the difference between love and criticism? Can we show you the clear, distinct difference between those two energies? If you want that, say yes. And as we know, love never criticizes. Love doesn't control anything. Love is the freest energy that is available to us. It's the most freeing, healing energy. Any misconceptions that you have around love, beliefs that it's a fairy tale, it's an idealistic, it's like a rom-com movie, it's dramatic, there's a lot of ups and downs, you have to sacrifice yourself, your well-being in order to have it. So can we have your I am presence show you all the lessons you were meant to learn from any misconceptions you may have had past, present, future around love that is not serving you for your highest and greatest good and is not in alignment with the universal understanding of love. Would you like that? Can we create space between love and criticism so that you can clearly feel the difference between those energies? Any part of you that was choosing to criticize as a form of loving yourself, can we show you how to move through that without judging yourself and out of it so that you can truly love yourself the way you deserve to be loved? Would you like that? Can we clear any beliefs that love is weak, it gets taken advantage of? All those beliefs as well. Can we clear those now? Any part of you that was not fully acknowledging, loving, embracing, honoring, having compassion for your inner critic, can we go ahead and show you all the lessons from those times? Can we heal all the trauma from not fully acknowledging, loving, accepting? And then can we show you how to love, accept, nourish, have compassion for, honor your inner critic? If you want that, say yes. Can we show you how to also honor the part of you that is willing to do the inner healing work to expand and grow? The fact that you're here right now with me just in this moment is a confirmation of that. So can we also celebrate and honor the part of you that is willing to do the inner healing work? Can we do that now? All right, my beautiful friends. So until next time, I appreciate you and I wish you a miraculous day.